I went down there to have a look at it and see if we could see anything else. Mm. But basically, um, this ring has east and west kind of flows of water and the flow down this ring and then at the other end, the conjoints, so east and west meet. Mm. So if you think of that symbology of east and west meeting, Islam and Christianity conjoining, do you know what I mean? The, the mm. whole idea of unifying something into one. Yeah. So there's the symbology of the unification of two, two extremes in this ring of water. Mm. But basically, if you look into Isis, she's identified with the Holy Ghost, as I've said, and the angel Gabriel. And now in the film, The Lord of the Rings, which is an esoteric piece of work by J.R. Tolkien, obviously everyone knows The Lord of the Rings because it's been uh, put on the uh, cinema screens, mm. but there's a character in there called Galadriel. And if you look into the history of the character Galadriel, she was identified with the angel Gabriel, i.e. Yeah. that's what she was, that's mm -hmm. what she's symbolic for. Yeah. And she was the wearer of a water ring. She controlled the water ring. Mm. So obviously you've got a Princess Diana, water ring memorial, where east and west meet, combined with the angel Gabriel and Lord of the Rings, or Galadriel being the water, water ring bearer. Mm. So you've got this symbolic thing figure and this, symboli you know, this symbolism running throughout. So moving on to the next thing, how else can I ad identify Diana with Isis? And so you start looking at to the Pont d'Alma, where she died, where she had a horrific car crash. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's stuff on the internet already that insinuates that the Pont d'Alma was a pagan sacrificial site. Mm -hmm. um, and it was used like ritually for hundreds of years, like prior to um, you know, the modernization of the area. Right. Um, outside of the tunnel, we have a flame of liberty, which is in... Uh, tribute to Diana's passing. Yeah. The Flame of Liberty, which is similar to the Olympic torch, well in fact it is the Olympic torch, um, but if you think about the Flame of Liberty, and then you think to the Statue of Liberty in New York. The Statue of Liberty, I mean, uh, Graham Hancock and uh, Robert Baval will all state that the Statue of Liberty in New York is symbolic for ISIS. Mm. Um, and outside where Diana died, you've got this, you know, Flame of Liberty um, statue, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And again, if you go back to the Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall, Isis carries with her the sacred fire re religiously preserved and kept burning in a special temple by the Vestal Virgin. Mm. The fire is genuine, immortal flame of Isis. So, symbolically, what she's got outside the Ponda armor is a, you know, a connection to Isis yet again. Mm. So, moving on, I'd, I'd got wind of a uh, tribute in Harrods, and this is where, obviously, uh, do you know much about the Diana murder inquest and everything that goes with it? Uh, you know, much, much of it, not all the details, but the overarching right. story is very familiar to me, yes. Right, yeah, obviously there's the whole conspiracy, the idea that she was murdered, and Alpha had believed that she was murdered, and there's the, the fight with the royal family, essentially. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you go to Harrods, and this is where it's proof that both sides are in on the same act, and this, is, this, this shows that this whole idea of the conspiracy of the murder of Princess Diana is all part of the intended stage play. Mm. that's been going on all along. Mm. In the Harrods, um, in Harrods I, I went up to a woman and I said, where's the uh, Princess Diana memorial? She went, oh, it's in the Egyptian staircase. <laughs> so I was like, you're joking me. So <laughs> get led to, led to this Egyptian staircase. And you go in, it's just real, I've been to Egypt, and it's, you know, pretty much exactly the same as what you'd expect in Egypt. Real grand, golden-looking, like, staircase with escalators in it and stuff like that, and loads uh -huh. of cheap perfumes, well, not cheap, really expensive <laughs> perfumes on sale. Yeah. And you walk over to the shrine of Princess Diana and Dodi al Fayed, and you've got these two pictures. You've got, obviously, Diana and Dodi. Think mm. about that. Christianity and you've got Islam. Right. And these two pictures are being symbolically held up by a dove. And the dove is also attributed to the Holy Ghost, which is the same thing as the angel Gabriel and everything else that goes with it. Mm. So you've got symbology there. Below these two photographs, you've got a pyramid. Right, a 3D pyramid with a time glass in it. So mm. symbolic to pyramids and time and stuff. Yeah. Then on either side of that, you've got two very tall candles looking like a number 11 and also looking like the two pillars of masonry that Isis is standing between. Mm. So what I'm here and proposing today is that essentially we have got Princess Diana being identified with the fertility god of Isis. Hmm. Very right. interesting. Do, do you have, so, by the way, do you have uh, 
taken any pictures of of uh, this I've memorial? Got, I've, I've got photos of it. I, the problem I've got is I can't write enough in enough time because I work full time as well to yeah. get this all out. Do you know what I mean? It's such a big thing to write about. It's, of course, uh, of course. It requires a lot of time. Yeah. But basically, um, so you think about this with the New World Order, they wanted a one world religion. We've got the combination of Christianity and Islam here symbolically mm. in Harry. Right, and obviously Islam and Christianity both accept the angel Gabriel as a messenger of God. Mm. So we've got the proof here that they want to do this with Diana. They want to identify her with Isis. Mm. So what does that make Prince William? If Isis is, you know, the mother fertility god, that obviously means that William naturally becomes the son. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So looking at this, I thought, right, we have to do a bit of research into William now. And I, I, you know, six months ago, someone said that I was going to be researching the royal family. I'd have laughed my head off and said, you know, get away. It doesn't concern me whatsoever. <laughs> but I've ended up being driv driven down this path, and I'm <laughs> it's doing my head in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but anyhow, Prince William's birthday. Um, he was born on June the 21st. Mm. You know, when June the 21st is. That's the summer solstice. Yes, yeah. um, so basically, you know, the son of most high. Yep. So in the New Testament, the angel Gabriel announced, He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the most high. The mm -hmm. holy which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So we've got Prince William's birthday, and it's on the solstice, when the sun is most high. Yeah. Right? And then you look into it a bit further. How old is he in 2012? Probably 33, right? Nice. 30 years old. 30 years right. old, okay, yeah. Mm. Connection here. Jesus began his ministry at age 30. There you go, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you can't get away from this. It's all over these people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, symbolically, 30 years old, William's birthday, symbolically can be seen as an XXX in Roman numerology. That's right, yeah. And it just so happens the Olympics 2012 is XXX. So it's the same same Olympiad. It's as exactly, well. exactly. It's it's the uh, the what does it be? the thirtieth uh, yeah, games 30th. summer Olympic yeah. games yeah XXX. Yeah. <laughs> so right then you start thinking you know what I was saying about for instance symbology and stuff like that and you've got um, you've got McDonald's and you've got uh, Starbucks and you've got Schweppes all like essentially occult symbology that's when people are buying into these things they're subconsciously buying into this messianic event you know mm -hmm. as I've stated before. Yeah. Well, if you think about this and the symbolism of the XXX, the triple X, think about what most single men do on the computers. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, that's powerful energy that's being wasted there. Hmm. <laughs> this life-giving energy and, like, you know, they're symbolically buying into that triple X stuff. You know hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> same, as you've got, same as you've got the triple X film with uh, Vin Diesel, in which he's seen as this heroic figure and everyone went to the cinema and powered the triple X thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, this, is, this shows you how endemic this thing is and, like, you and know, how crafty these things are. Of course, and, and also I think it, uh, if you convert the, the alphanumerical number on an uh, alphanumeric system from one yeah. to to nine, then I think X becomes uh, six, so it's basically six, 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 right six, there. Six, six, well, I didn't know that, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the next thing on, uh, moving into William yet again, with more stuff to do with him, um, it turned out a few months ago that he'd been made the thousandth member of the Order of the Garter. Now, mm. he's actually the 999th member of the Order of the Garter, but they changed it to a thousandth because of uh, someone, you know, not being registered or something on the official log. But as you will know, the Order of the Garter is the parent organization of Freemasonry. Yeah. Right. Um, so if you think about that situation that we've got there, what are the chances that Prince William, if they hadn't pre-planned this, would happen to be the 1,000th member? I.e., you know, in the chronology of events, it just so happened that he was bang on the 1,000th member. And, and that's also could be interpreted as the 1,000 points of lights. So I don't know if you heard about that. I don't know about that. No, that's uh, new to me. Uh, that's but, the, yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? It's 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 quite a hard coincidence to fall upon that it'd be the thousandth member in you know as as is as it happens. Of to, course, of course. But then go on further on again. Did did you come across the Prince William received his wings uh, news all over Sky News and stuff recently? I don't mm. know if you came across. That. Basically, uh, yeah. He's, uh, he's been in the RAF, he's been doing his duties, and there's all the RAF sim symbolism flying everywhere at the moment. They're trying to get everyone into the armed forces by giving everyone a bank holiday for armed forces day, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just keep the war going, guys. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, uh, 
with the RAF, he said he received his wings. And if you look at the symbolism of the RAF wings and the RAF, basically, when you don't have your wings, the RAF is the logo is the RAF in a, um, you know, a, a circle of um, I can't remember the name for it, a uh, a ring.